I just checked Wikipedia before I came out here, and it says that this next woman is considered one of the greatest actresses of all time. So for those of you in the room here who founded Wikipedia, you got that right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the true wonders of my profession, and I'm gonna make this introduction by doing my very best William Hurt impression. Remember who William Hurt is? Yes, William Hurt. She and he did the big chill together, and while this impression is actually scarily good, it's curiously not very much in demand. I think because it is in fact so scary. It is my honor and great privilege to painfully introduce a woman who frightens me. Her talent is generous, and she is unrelenting. Glenn Close. When Jay Flatley of Illumina, who is here tonight, asked me if I would be the first named female to have my genome fully sequenced. I, I said, why me? Maybe it's because I'm a 12th generation Connecticut Yankee. Maybe it's because I can cry like a baby. Maybe it's because I scared the shit out of 200 million men. But Jay said, no. I'd like you to do it because Oprah turned us down. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and I was very honored and happy that you did. As we are reminded tonight, there is no greater miracle or more powerful force on Earth than the human mind. That power is demonstrated brilliantly by the inaugural class of Life Sciences Laureates. As previous winners themselves, they served as judges who chose the winners of tonight's breakthrough prizes in Life Sciences. These are all great thinkers whose passion led them to make truly transformative advances in our understanding of life and the fight against disease. I'm not looking directly at disease. I'm looking at how the world works. Everything we discover about life becomes a tool for learning more about life. I don't want the people in my laboratory to agree with me because to my mind that would be the death sentence of science in my laboratory. I'm a kid from Brooklyn, New York, grew up on Flatbush Avenue. I was a math kid didn't do any science whatsoever. As a child, I was heavily interested in little animals, and I was always going to be a biologist. I didn't get particularly good grades, but I understood things quickly. I'm not a very creative person, really. I'm just a very curious person. <laughs> Being able to satisfy my curiosity about how things work, I, you know, this is probably what I learned from my father. In high school, my little scientific compadres and I stole all the sodium from the Earth Science Lab, and we flushed it down a toilet, which we blew off the wall. In elementary school, I was called the brain. In high school, I was only one among many. In college, I was probably in the bottom quarter of the class. But who knows what all that means? I grew up in a time in Holland when a woman was really, her goal in life was to marry and have children. My mother's father was a rabbi and his father and his father. How come I didn't become a rabbi? That's a question my mother often <laughs> still asks me. <laughs> I underwent several sort of existential crises that everyone goes through in their 20s of, you know, what am I going to be? I spent 10 years to become a doctor, but then I gave up after only two or three years because I found I was not talented at all in uh, surgery. Some of my relatives actually criticized me for not going to clinical medicine. They, they thought research was like a second-rate career. Scientists do mainly two jobs. You know, one job is to find the truth. Uh, the other is to contribute to society. Scientist is somebody who really wants to find out 
answers in nature. Geeks. We are geeks. It's true. I, I dug out that strain for somebody, and I did it in the dead of night so nobody could see uh, all the rules I was breaking. A student of mine, he demonstrated for the first time that if you extract DNA from one cancer cell and you put it in a normal cell, the latter becomes itself cancerous. It was just unbelievably exciting to see for the first time what it was that made a cancer cell different from a normal cell at the level of the genes. Boy, you live for the highs when you can put together the pieces and see something that nobody had seen before. And then you realize that it's nothing. You've just lifted a little forehead of the veil, and there's much more to lift up. Underlying the excitement about just knowing why does a cancer cell develop, is the idea that you could develop drugs that are much more intelligently designed to target the actual cause of the cancer rather than the carpet bombing chemotherapy approach. Through science, we may be able to help thousands of patients simultaneously. An approach like our approach might actually help to devise a personalized medicine for an individual to tailor the drugs that is best for that patient. This is a 51-year-old woman, and she went on this drug. This was before she went on the drug, and this is a month later. The progress is absolutely incredible. Somebody came, you know, from uh, 40 years ago and saw what's happening, would believe that this is absolutely science fiction. Every now and then in science, you really do have a eureka moment. You realize you're the first person ever on Earth to understand how some fundamental thing about biology or chemistry works. I saw the shape of the answer. In a second, in a split second, they could see all the work we would do the next five years. And I thought, it's 3.30 in the morning. What am I going to do? We looked at each other and said, this can't be true. It's too good to be true. But it turned out to be true. And I think scientists are just addicted to that. You know, it's exhilarating to, to think that something that we're doing really is going to save people's lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we would now like to recognize the 2013 Breakthrough Prize laureates. Will they all please stand?